Hi, this is BB Ukrainian Analytics. My name is Bogdan Butkevich. I'm a Ukrainian journalist and vlogger. Hi, and I'm Olena Vostrova, a Ukrainian vlogger. And here we give you the top news, analytics and insights about Russia-Ukraine war. So, subscribe to our channel if you want to get news and inside information about Ukraine and Russia-Ukraine's war directly from Ukraine. On September 21, in the early morning, the Russian Federation began to strike Ukraine's energy infrastructure for the first time in six months since March 9. The Ukrainian air defense system shut down 38 missiles out of 44. Several missiles hit the energy facility in the Rivne and several more caused a temporary power outage in Kyiv. Also, according to Ukrenergo, several targets in central Ukraine were hit. As a result, more than 300 settlements turned out to be disconnected for a certain time. It is obvious that when the cold weather comes, the Russian army will go on using its terrorist tactics on attacking the Ukrainian energy system. Last year, only a warm winter and unprecedented help from the West helped Ukraine not to fall into a situation of complete blackout. So what are the prospects at the moment? From mid-August to today, the occupiers, Russians, have fired at least 110 missiles of the H-101 type. Um, that's the data from our armed forces. And according to information from the Defense Intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, a month ago, the Russian army had stockpile of 100 missiles. The Defense Intelligence also reported that Russia can produce 40 missiles of this type per month. That is, if you trust the official information from the Defense Intelligence, the Russian Federation should currently have a little more than 30 missiles of the H-101 type. This is for one additional missile solo, and it is necessary to wait for others to be produced. The enemy has more calibers, but in connection with the recent events in Crimea and the Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Federation, the number of missile carriers may decrease. And their use will be, you know, very limited. Shahed and Iskander and ballistic missiles are the greatest threat. 380 mopeds, that's how we call Iranian Shahed's, were produced in the last months. Also data from the Air Force and the production rates in the Russian Federation. And the monthly rates of and, uh, receiving this crap from Iran are approximately 200 units a month. So Shahed's will constantly fly over Ukraine and it is the ability to knock them down that will be the key to the survival of the Ukrainian energy system and the country as a whole. The Russian Federation had problems finding motors for these uh, UAVs. However, it persistently tries to solve them. Therefore, the air defense assistance provided in the latest US aid package is very appropriate and timely. There are not many mobile groups to combat enemy UAVs. We need more. And here again we mention the American help with 50 millimeter machine guns to fight precisely with the Shahids. 
After all, enemy drones are now produced approximately two, three times more than last winter. Also, the Russian Federation will make a bet on ballistic Iskanders for shelling the energy industry. However, they have a range of up to 500 kilometers, so they are not suitable for shelling the entire territory. Therefore, it is quite possible that Putin will now again force Lukashenko to allow the deployment of this missile complex on the territory of Belarus to deliver massive strikes from there on Ukraine as it was at the beginning of the Russians' full-scale invasion. Whether Lukashenko, who is desperately trying to, you know, to survive, will allow this, it is not a fact. Therefore, there will be shelling of the energy industry. For six months, the Russian Federation studied the state of our power system and also studied new routes for the passage of air targets. Unfortunately, it can now be stated that the invaders, now with fewer missiles, have approximately the same effectiveness as at the end of this winter, about 15-20% successful hits. We are still very dependent on new deliveries of air defense systems, and now there will be a special need for the Patriot and SAMP-T complexes. If we get at least six or seven more batteries of these complexes, our sky will be even more protected and the effectiveness of the occupied shelling will drop to five to seven percent. And most likely in this case, we will be able to avoid long blackouts, uh, 12 plus hours across all the country. The fact is, and it is against Ukraine, that the system enters this dangerous confrontation with much less readiness than last year. Many energy objects simply did not have time to restore during the summer. However, new power transmission lines to the west have now been built, which makes it possible to more effectively attract emergency assistance if necessary. In any case, a very difficult winter awaits Ukraine. Russia will make every effort to bring cold, pain and death to the homes of every Ukrainian. In Moscow, they hope to break the will of Ukrainians to resist, destroy the economy and prevent the armed forces from preparing for the next offensive. Therefore, we are entering another battle for life with Russian terrorists. And again, without the help of the West, it will be very difficult. Therefore, the motto is simple. More air defense means more help. And more offensive weapons means solving the course of the problem, so we do not have to waste resources on fighting with the effects. That's all for today. Please write your comments right under this video. And sure, give us your like and subscribe to our channel. Here we tell you the truth about Ukraine and give you the inside information about Russia-Ukraine war. See you. Papa.